enzymes, for instance, without which no other proteins can be made, is identical from bacteria to man. Since the same main types of creatures and plants alive today were living in the past, it is quite clear that the same complex mechanism of life has existed from the very beginning. To the geneticist, this is a very obvious proof that biochemical evolution has never taken place. One final question, Professor. When did man come onto the scene? How did man? <coughs> Surely there is no evidence that man derived from some uh, primitive animal whatsoever. For what we can say, observing the human chromosomes or the human uh, DNA and comparing it with that of uh, other species, is that man is original. Man is not derived from any other species. So the statement that man is a uh, uh, recent creature coming from some uh, primitive form cannot be supported by genetic data at all. One of the problems facing geologists today is the fossilized tree. There are a number of examples in Australia and America and elsewhere where a fossilized tree can be seen running vertically through a number of coal seams. Here's an example from the coal fields of Birmingham in Alabama in the United States. As some of these fossilized trees, 12 meters or more in height, can be seen running through a number of banks. This model gives uh, some idea of the situation. Now, the curious thing is that we are told that any one of these banks takes millions of years to form. Now, if this was the case, it would take millions of years to bury the tree. But that's not possible, because the tree would decompose or rot long before it was all buried. So, what is the explanation? Well, a scientist has studied the problem. And the episode you're about to see will give you an idea of the implications of his startling but exciting discovery. Now, in order to understand the explanation, it's important to know the difference between a layer and a bank. These are banks, these areas colored orange and yellow and bluish. In each bank, you can see a number of strata. What you can't see are the layers. You can't see them because as each layer of sediment arrived, it sorted itself out into the banks that you can see. If you could see them, they would look something like this. After you've seen the film, you will understand why. Knowing the difference between a bank and a layer is so important. It not only provides the key to the fossil tree problem, but it also explains why the theory of evolution is crumbling. And what's so important about those rocks? Well, they're not any old rocks. They are made mostly of tiny grains of sediment. They are called sedimentary rocks and cover three quarters of all the land on Earth. And what's more, they were formed under the sea. When the sea level dropped and the sediments were exposed to the air, they dried out to become rocks. Look at this cliff face. It's divided into facies, sometimes called banks or deposits. The sandstone deposit has been colored yellow, the deposit of clay blue, and the limestone colored orange. 
Each deposit or bank is subdivided into strata. These horizontal lines are strata. To understand the incredible story that this film has to tell, a closer look at the strata in the deposit is necessary. They follow a pattern. The larger particles collect together in a line at the bottom, then the smaller ones gather on top. This pattern is repeated throughout the deposit. Sometimes a break or joint can be seen between the top strata in one deposit and the bottom strata in the deposit on top. These breaks are called stratification joints or bedding plane partings. For some time now, there's been a suspicion that these rocks contain a secret, which when discovered will change our ideas on the most important subject of all. How did mankind originate? One of the first sedimentary rock experts was a German. His name was Johannes Walter. Whilst in Italy, at the end of the last century, he examined the sediments in the Bay of Naples. He discovered, by boring vertically downwards through the sediments in the bay, that the banks that lay on top of each other were in the same sequence as those that were lying next to each other horizontally. The sequence of banks that could be seen lying side by side as he went from the coast out to the sea was the same as the sequence of banks that lay on top of each other in a downwards direction. He realized that the belief that the bank at the bottom was older than the one on top was wrong. Quite obviously, all the banks, the one at the top, the one underneath, and the one at the bottom, were all still forming. They were forming sideways, so that part of the top bank was the same age as part of the bottom bank. It didn't take Walter very long to work out what caused the banks to form sideways. The particles of sediment coming into the sea from rivers, floods and wind sort themselves according to their size. These larger particles, coloured yellow, stay near to the coast. The less heavy ones, coloured blue, are washed out a little farther. Then the tiny sediments, the orange ones, are carried out by the waves and currents even farther. It can be seen that the layers of new sediment are deposited side by side. The particles of sediment in the layers sort themselves out according to their size into the banks of various types of sediment. This could be a bank of pebbles, this a bank of sandstone and this one clay. So the banks form sideways. That part of the bank nearest the coast is older than the part of the same bank farther away from the coast. So this part of the bank at the bottom is the same age as this part of the bank at the top. Before Johannes Walter, in 1870, two Russians, Golovkinsky and Inon Strantsev, had noticed that in ancient ocean basins that had filled up with sediment, the same series of deposits could be seen on the surface side by side and vertically one underneath the other. The feature of these series of deposits or facies are that they are parallel to the basin slope. Those in the Gulf of Naples observed by Volta are not. They are almost horizontal. The reason is that apart from small changes caused by the tides, the series of deposits in the Gulf of Naples and elsewhere result from the sea always being at the same level. The position of deposits of sediments in ocean basins, such as those observed by the two Russian scientists, would seem to be the result of major changes in the level of the ocean. Rising water level is called a transgression.